Hello everyone, my name is David Kohar, and I want to take you through a brief overview of how you can take sales analytics to the next level by leveraging Microsoft Dynamics CRM, our sales analytics solutions, and Power BI. Let me start off by describing our sales analytics solutions that we created in CRM. We created a pipeline snapshot solution that does time-based snapshots of your opportunities. This allows you to track the changes in your pipeline to see whether it's increasing or decreasing. We created a pipeline analysis solution, and this drills into revenue-based metrics as well as sales cycle-based metrics on your pipeline itself. And then thirdly, we created a forecast accuracy solution, and this gives you better understanding of how accurate your sales team is actually forecasting their deals. Now, each one of these solutions are available individually, and we have a video ready on YouTube to show you how these solutions work directly inside of CRM. What I want to describe in this video is how you can take that sales analytics now to the next level by adding in Power BI on top of our sales analytics solutions and Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So I want to begin here inside of Power BI. And now that we've taken those three sales analytics solutions that we've created data for inside of CRM and brought that forward here into Power BI, we can do some really unique analysis. So for example, I can drill in here and look at the average revenue as it's flowing through the actual pipeline itself. Now, if I want to slice this a little bit more detailed and have a conversation with David, I can see how his pipeline actually changes over time. So he goes from an average of 169,000 up to 208 when he's proposing, but we can see he has to discount a little bit to get those deals across the finish line. Now, if I want to look at this by his customers, I can see that in fact, he actually does very little discounting, which is probably what we expect to see versus when he's working with prospects, he looks like he's actually discounting a lot more in order to get those first engagements started with those individual customers. So something interesting to spot there for sure when I'm talking to him next. Next, we might want to look at things like our average days of close based on our sales outcome. And we can see here that we're actually losing and winning on price, but it, it's taking us a lot longer, of course, than when we're winning on relationships. So we might want to drill into this in a little bit more detail. So I can see the widget up here that shows me that data. Again, as I segment this by each rep, I can see that in fact, David again is taking a lot less time to win on relationships. Let's see how Evan's doing. Evan's even taking a lot less time to do it. So next time I'm talking to Evan in particular, I'm gonna remind him the importance of building up those relationships and how much that is gonna impact his sales cycles. Next, I might want to look at our snapshot data of our pipeline. We can see that we've been growing our pipeline pretty nicely here from October through beginning of November. But as we got into December, that number has gone down significantly. So I might want to look at that in a little bit more detail. Now, I can see things down here like how the pipeline has actually increased or decreased based on the certain factors that have happened. Sometimes the reps have actually decreased the amount of the deals themselves that's highlighted here. Sometimes, of course, they've either won opportunities or even lost opportunities, which, of course, is shrinking our pipeline. But we can see here that our pipeline overall is decreasing pretty significantly. So I'm going to have to work with the team to make sure we're starting to build our pipeline up through December to get it ready for next year. Now, when I look at things like opportunity value by source campaign, I can see overall how different campaigns are having an impact for us, whether it be for prospects. So again, our, our ad in the LA Times had a much bigger impact on bringing in pipeline for our prospects as it did, of course, for our customers, whereas our social media, where our customers are following more closely, I can see that we're actually building a lot more pipeline using social media as a way to get to our customers. So that's good. And lastly, I want to look at our forecast accuracy. I can see here that on average, our team is actually winning 70% of the time when they've committed a deal but we're expecting them to be closer to 90%. So I want to drill in here and see what's going on. Now, while again, our average is 70%, I can look at this across the board by each sales rep. Now, David is actually down at 67%. Evan's at 83%. And actually, Kelly is at 60%. So next time I'm speaking to Kelly and David, in particular, I'm going to have some conversations with them around how they're thinking about committing deals, what those steps are that they're taking in order from going from commit all the way into getting that deal over the goal line and making sure that they're doing all the right things. So with that, I'd like to do a quick wrap up.
I want to thank you for watching our video today on how to take sales analytics here to the next level using Microsoft Dynamics CRM, our sales analytics solutions, and Power BI. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to your account director. Thank you.